In 2016, I started an experiment. I put these 3D printed samples outside to see how they would weather. In the five years, a lot have changed with these samples, but I have not changed a bit. Thanks, Craig, for doing that. Um, so this experiment's been running for five years now. And a couple years ago, I actually had to zip tie up the board uh, to keep it from getting knocked over by the squirrels. And I think the zip ties are made with ABS, but it's interesting to see that probably after three, three years, they're just snapping off like crazy. So I need to replace those. And here's, I still have all the controls. So in a minute, I'll go through all the ones that are on the board and just kind of review individually or in sections um, how each of these different materials are weathered. So thanks to Craig for letting me keep this board up on his fence and for starting in the intro. So I'll go from left to right on the board. Um, on the board, excuse the uh, guano, but you could see that the first one is ColorFab XT, which has lightened significantly over five years, um, but actually is held up pretty well. Let's see if I can zoom out. And so you can see that it's warped a little bit on the bottom and all these have started curling up a little bit. Um, but otherwise it's fine. For the carbon fiber, this is, I wanna say it's a sample of ColorFab carbon fiber. Or actually, no, this is protopasta, sorry. So this is protopasta. Um, some pieces are broken off and on I think that's from when the boards fell, the board fell a couple times. Um, and feeling wise, it is a little rougher than the sample. So I suspect some of it's, the carbon fibers just work their way up. Now here are the protopasta stainless steel and magnetic iron PLAs. Uh, so I pretty much, I think this one's the polished one, non-polished, polished, non-polished. Non and you can tell that they've obviously really severely lightened and the mag irons have really rusted out. Um, these breaks are from when the board fell. Um, and these have curled up a little bit. But from the control sample, which has been inside for five years, versus what's been outdoors in the Colorado weather, um, you can see that this still has a nice gray steel appearance, um, which is an interesting look. These two, um, the red one is ColorFab Engen and ColorFab Glowfill. Now, after five years, the glow in the dark material is pretty much gone. I haven't seen this glow in a few years now. Um, this is definitely more brittle for the Engen and it did snap off when the board fell. Um, and there's a little bit of light weathering on here that's a little more subs. Uh, a little more surface wear um, so it just kind of highlights any imperfections from the original print um, and this is peeled up a little bit but not much so for these three this is color fat bronze fill and copper fill and I don't remember why I didn't put a polished section of copper fill up because here's a polished version here's an unpolished one and I think, yeah, this one's polished, or sanded. Um, so they've lightened up for these. Um, definitely light, uh, whitened up, taking a little bit more patina on them. The copper fill, um, some of this is guano that makes the streaking, but also the rest is, um, as it's gone wet, it's come off these uh, deck screws. Um, it's oxidized a little bit, giving some color. Sorry, quick correction. This is ColorFab carbon fiber. And the one I showed earlier was Protopasta conductive PLA. Um, anything with high carbon content doesn't seem to warp a lot. Um, and definitely seems to keep its shape. Um, it's still a little brittle from probably the PLA degrading, but you can see that even the color isn't too far off from each other. So here's probably the most um, sun bleached um, samples here. This is ColorFab Woodfill. 
which is um, their maple fill and this cork fill. So <laughs> you can see the difference between the maple and cork fill, but also the cork fill, pretty much all the brown, rich brown color of the cork fill is gone. And the only way I could tell is because I actually wrote what's on the back of these. So probably if you're looking for the material that handles the outdoors the worst, um, between PVA and these, just for appearance, um, warpage is not bad at all. Um, and it does feel still fairly intact. I'm not gonna pull too hard on any sample. But uh, just in terms of appearance, you probably want to shellac or varnish these if you wanted them outside. For these two, this is three dumb um, composites. Um, so they've actually changed their name, I think, to 3D Fuel now. Uh, but here's their glass fill, which was a fiberglass filled PLA. And this is the world famous BuzzFeed filament. So yes, their famous uh, film that was made with beer wort. Um, this is another one that's really degraded over time, just in terms of color. And it's still slightly flexible. Um, it's been fun. Their products have always been fun to print with. And this fiberglass one took a dive. Unfortunately, it did shatter too. And you can kind of see how it uh, broke here. Um, definitely broke a little cleaner than some of the others um, so I don't know if it would be good for an automotive use or just stick with ASA for that so people have asked me like what filaments kind of what about ABS so this lime green one here is Isun PLA and this one is Isun ABS um, so the PLA is probably definitely degraded from this lime green down to this um, I don't know what you call it, like a teal. And this one's gone from a neon down to kind of a, I don't know what to call this, like pukey yellow. I don't know, something like that. Um, so the ABS definitely degrades in terms of color. It's still flexible. And both these have actually done a decent job out here in terms of just rigidity um, color wise of course you're going to lose a lot so hopefully you can see all that there um, this is probably going to come up but what about a hemp based filament so this is a prototype uh, PETG hemp mix that I got from a friend on Facebook um, out in California. So as far as I could tell, it's definitely the, the PETG probably is degraded a lot. And you can see a little bit of flex and everything from the hemp in this. And I accidentally just snapped this uh, when I was getting ready to film it. Um, but this was a prototype blend of uh, PETG hemp. Um, definitely low content, probably about 10% hemp fiber. Um, I don't think I have any other hemp fibers on the board. But this was an experiment he sent me, so it's not the definitive version of his mix. Uh, next one is 3DD Plus PLA. And it took me a second to find it because I didn't realize the color shifted so badly. Um, so you can kind of see it's gone from that um, olive drab color down to almost uh, barely there, like hint of green. And this one here is MakerBot PLA. So I had some uh, 1.75 PLA at the beginning of this project, so I just figured I'd get it out there. Um, MakerBot actually does a decent job with filming if the rest of their company's products, like their Thingverse or um, um, printers didn't suck. Um, minimal warping with this, but um, I pretty much just used up my PLA from MakerBot and got rid of it and uh, moved on. So editing Stan here, I made a mistake. So it uh, looks like I apparently forgot to hit the wrong record button. Uh, so now from MakerBot PLA over, um, here are the TPUs, the NinjaFlex and SemiFlex. 
Green one is Ninja Flex. Red one is Semi Flex. Um, you can see that both of them have darkened up a lot. And in terms of flexibility, both of these have the same flexibility as the originals. Um, the green one here maybe has a couple of wear spots that either wore through from uh, a bad spot in printing or um, just weathering. Uh, red one has a little chip down here, but is as stiff as, well actually this one's semi-flex is slightly stiffer than the original and the Ninja Flex feels just about the same. So for the next three, um, this is Color Fab PLA PHA. Um, and it, you can see from this uh, transparent one over, um, it definitely kind of clouded and frosted over. Um, and I think at this point it wouldn't work as a transparent filament or translucent filament. This middle one I accidentally snapped earlier. Uh, this is actually from a Chinese company and it's kind of an off-brand sample that they sent of PVB polyvinyl uh, butyrate instead of polyvinyl styrene for ABS. So it's a different type of polymer. And I don't know if I could get the... Yeah, so if you look really close to the surface, it's actually kind of bubbled up and formed a different texture from the original. Um, it's definitely yellowed a lot, so this is something common with a lot of the uh, petrochemical-based plastics is they'll go more yellow or brown. But this is more of an oddball, and it's just kind of interesting to see the different plastics on the market. Now, this one is... Um, from, I believe, a Spanish company. They actually sent me recycled filament that I reviewed. And this is made with actual recycled pop bottle. And I think they just took pop bottles, ran through a filament extruder, and tried to get it into filament. It was a pain in the butt to print, and it would not print clear or transparent, or translucent. And so, um, Coloring wise, it's come down a little bit, and I did crack it down here. It's been cracked for a few years. And continuing down the list of kind of oddball filaments, this white one here is Labrick. Uh, so, this was a composite filament that was not real popular. Um, it has a nice stony finish, and it's actually, my understanding, it's made with some sort of limestone powder. Um, but it's a PLA composite. Um, I always had problems printing and getting it to print cleanly because it, uh, it was really gloppy and messy. And this one, if I remember right, is ABS carbon fiber. So, other than... Uh, it's definitely dulled the finish, but it still has a lot of strength and still um, fairly straight. So, again, those carbon, the carbon fiber filaments really seem to stand out and keep their shape in the outdoors. So, go, keep going down the list. Um, this first one here, first white one, is ColorFab uh, HT, uh, high temperature. And so, this is another one of their co-PETGs that um, has uses if you want like high strength or you can anneal it. Um, so I did a video a long time ago on that. I'll post it here. Um, it's yellowed a bit. Gone down in color. Um, everyone's asked, looking at PETGs right now for 3D printing. So here's a sample I put out about three years ago. It's gone, it's definitely lightened. And all the surface shine is gone. But PETG actually looks like it would be a pretty decent one for outdoor use. And this last one, unfortunately, is another Chinese off-brand. So this is polycarbonate plus ABS. And it looks like ABS just yellows like crazy over time. So you can see the difference here. And 
this was okay to print with. I've printed other polycarbonates like uh, Nanodax, Nanodax Glass Fill. Um, but I don't know about composites like this. Um, so this black one I think is another carbon fiber ABS or carbon fiber PLA. I just can't figure out which one. I'm going to have to go back in my records. This one is a Chinese company called Decale. They sent me a free sample of their 175 and it was absolute garbage to print with. Um, and they're part of the reason I did a video on the uh, Amazon scandals where uh, people were buying, basically getting bought, having their reviews bought. Um, Decale actually tried to pull a stunt like this where um, they were like, oh, if you give us a five-star review and send us a picture of it, we'll get you a refund on the shipping. So they actually tried to pull this scam, but their filament was just garbage to print with. Um, next one over, this is Envent Nylon. So um, nylons are popular to print with. Um, they do take some special care to do. And it took me a while to get my nylon settings down. Uh, you can see it's definitely lightened from the baby blue, from the blue color down to this baby blue tealish dark teal color. Um, also lost some of its surface shine. So the last two I'll do, this is um, an Italian company's uh, hemp brand filament. And it actually printed up like a uh, cardboard when I printed it, so it was actually kind of interesting. Um, being hemp fiber, it's untreated, so it was going to degrade fairly quickly, and you can see the difference in color. And the last one, uh, this is Isun Brass Fill. So this is uh, their composite version of uh, brass metal. Um, I like printing with this, and it actually came out, have a nice shine on it, which has actually stayed with samples. So I'll uh, clean the board up and put the uh, samples back up here on the fence, leave them out for another few years. Um, pretty much um, I just want to see how long these last. Um, we've already seen a couple of them break and PLAs have just really faded out um, and I'll have to do an update later probably next year. Um, so if you like what you see, please like, comment, and subscribe. And definitely give a like for my uh, shout out for my dad Craig who uh, has let me run this experiment in his backyard and helped me film the intro. Thank you.